As the story begins, every nation desires a spy as skilled as Lloyd, codenamed Twilight. Orphaned at a young age, Lloyd chose the path of espionage for his homeland, Wales. His speed, intelligence, and combat skills earn him admiration among top agents. Yet, it's his talent for infiltration that sets him apart. Lloyd's method involves wooing women to gain access to crucial information, only to discard them afterward. After wrapping up one mission, Lloyd receives his next assignment, investigating the death of a prominent Welsh diplomat in Anya. Suspected to be a premeditated act threatening the ceasefire between the two nations, his target is Donovan Desmond, a key figure in the opposing faction. Lloyd must infiltrate Desmond's circle, starting with his son's college. To do so, he must pass the Eden College entrance exam within seven days. After a few days, Lloyd finally arrives in Berlin, a bustling city with a clear mission in mind. Under the alias Lloyd Forger, he swiftly secures a home and sets up his cover as a psychiatrist. Ensuring no wiretaps and mapping escape routes, he seals the deal without hesitation. Determined to fulfill his cover as a family man, Lloyd heads to an orphanage to adopt a child. Despite the minimum age requirement being six, he's drawn to Annal, who appears to be four. Astonishingly, she claims to be six after reading Lloyd's mind, showcasing her telepathic abilities. Impressed, Lloyd decides to take her in. Annal, used as an experimental subject, can read minds due to the tests she underwent. As they enter their new home, Annal's fascination with a spy and I'm unfolds, keeping her occupied. Lloyd, mindful of his spy principles, tries to proceed discreetly, but Annal's innocence poses challenges. Spending more time together, Lloyd realizes Annal is actually illiterate, mistaking bacon for bakery and misjudging money values. He contemplates switching her, but Annal fears abandonment, leading to tears. Determined to understand her better, Lloyd delves into parenting books, realizing the importance of nurturing her intellect for her future. Despite viewing their relationship as temporary, he resolves to care for her until the mission's end, vowing not to return her to the orphanage. The next day, Lloyd encourages Anna to prepare for the entrance exam, but she stubbornly refuses. Lloyd decides to head to work instead, but Anna insists on tagging along. Faced with no other option, Lloyd locks her up at home. At his workplace, Lloyd meets Frank, an agent who shares some information about Anna's mysterious past. Frank reveals that Anna's background is a mystery, with no records of her parents and a history of being shuffled between foster families. Meanwhile, bored at home, Anna starts playing with Lloyd's surveillance gadget. Despite it being locked, she manages to crack it open and reads Lloyd's thoughts again, discovering the password. Anna unwittingly sends a message through the device, which is intercepted by Aya's intelligence agency, alerting them to the presence of a Welsh spy. When Lloyd returns home, he finds himself ambushed, but easily dispatches the attackers. However, Anna is missing and Lloyd realizes his cover has been compromised. As Lloyd confronts the intruder, he realizes they've mistaken Anna for someone important and plan to take her captive. In the chaos, Lloyd is subdued and Anna, fearing for her safety, pretends to side with the intruders. Outdoors, Lloyd secretly instructs Anna on where to go for her safety before he's taken away. Lloyd arranges for Frank to return Anna to the orphanage, knowing he can no longer protect her as his cover is blown. Anna. Having overheard everything, decides to leave Lloyd's side temporarily. However, Lloyd quickly takes down the intruders using a trap he had set up. Before they leave, Lloyd warns Edgar to stay away from him, threatening to expose everything about Anna, including personal details and any criminal pursuits, knowing Edgar cares deeply for her. Returning home, Lloyd is surprised to find Anna waiting for him. Pretending to have just returned from the store and unaware of the events, Lloyd tries to protect her by keeping his distance. But Anna, fully aware of the situation, expresses her desire for him to stay close, making Lloyd hesitant to involve her further. Despite the risks, Lloyd decides to continue with Anna until the mission is complete. Days later, Anna takes her entrance exam, initially underestimating its difficulty. Recalling her father's teachings, she performs well and anxiously awaits the results. When her name is announced, Lloyd is relieved, finally letting his guard down. As they settle into their new home, Anna retrieves the mail and discovers an invitation for an interview at Eden College requiring both parents' presence. Realizing he needs a mother figure for the interview, Lloyd begins his search urgently, but none of Frank's suggestions satisfy Anna's needs. Meanwhile, at the municipal hall, female employees are on edge after a robbery targeting data on young women. You're a single woman of 27. Feels out of place in a society where single women are viewed suspiciously. Camilla, aware of yours deceit about having a partner, invites her to a birthday celebration, intending to expose her deception. Realizing she's dug herself into a hole, Yor knows she needs to find a solution fast. When her younger brother Yuri calls, Yor wastes no time and shows up the following day with her belongings. Anna excitedly greets her mother, making Yor blush with the unexpected title. 
Anna gives you a quick tour of their home, where Yor and Loy have separate bedrooms to maintain the appearance of a fake couple. Loy presents them with a fabricated marriage certificate, claiming they've been together for a year. With the interview approaching, Lloyd briefs them on potential questions and quizzes them to ensure they appear convincing. However, it becomes clear that neither Yor nor Lloyd can convincingly portray a wealthy family. To familiarize them, Lloyd takes them out for a day of activities typical of an upper-class lifestyle, including visiting an art gallery and attending an opera performance. He also instructs them on the behavior and speech expected in high society. During lunch, Lloyd's anxiety grows as he sees no improvement in their performance. Seeing his distress, Yor suggests taking a break to unwind. Agreeing, they head outside, but their peace is disrupted when a robber steals a grandmother's purse nearby. Yor instinctively chases after the thief, but he disappears into the crowd. Utilizing her telepathic abilities, Anna locates the thief and discreetly points him out to Lloyd. Despite breaking his rule of avoiding attention, Lloyd intervenes and apprehends the thief, ensuring their safety. The grandmother expresses her gratitude by giving them the purse, which surprises Lloyd. He's never received appreciation for his work before, making this a welcome change for him. Your blushes as they reject Anna's playful suggestion that they stop flirting. Grandma praises them for being a decent family, and Anna requests that Yor make hot chocolate at home, the only dish she enjoys despite Yor's terrible cooking. Despite being unprepared for the interview, Lloyd sees the grandmother's praise as a victory. On the day of the interview, Lloyd and Yor notice they're being watched as soon as they enter the college. They realize the teachers are observing their every move, testing their elegance. Henry, the chief instructor, is initially impressed by the Forger family's elegance, but when Anna struggles to enter, he becomes suspicious and requests more information about them. Despite Anna's low score in the exam, Henry decides to proceed to the next phase. In the second phase, a student struggles without assistance, testing whether the families will intervene. Lloyd intervenes, soiling his clothes but saving the child. Although impressed, Henry wants to investigate further. Suddenly, animals are unleashed, causing chaos. While everyone initially thinks it's staged, it's actually an accident. Lloyd prevents a young boy from being crushed, and Yor swiftly neutralizes the herd's leader, impressing Henry. Henry, amazed by their capabilities, expresses gratitude and sends them to the interview stage, despite their damaged clothes because they saved everyone from harm. As the interview stage begins, Lloyd reassures Henry that he has spare clothes, but Henry is too terrified to be impressed. The first question is directed at Lloyd about how he met Yor and the circumstances of her birth. Lloyd responds calmly, highlighting Yor's qualities. When Yor is asked the same question, she provides a fantastic response. Lloyd is most concerned about Swan, who he researched and found to be avaricious and rude. Swan questions why Yor, a stunning woman, would marry someone like Lloyd with a menial job, but Henry interrupts, calling the question impolite. The rest of the questions are answered by Lloyd without provocation. When asked about Anna and Yor, Lloyd describes Anna as a bright student but finicky about food, and Yor as a wonderful mother and wife who struggles in the kitchen. Swan is enraged, unable to comprehend why Lloyd would marry a non-cook, but Lloyd emphasizes Yor's importance as a mother to Anna. Swan, furious, intends to sabotage the interview, but Anna picks up on it and knows it must be avoided. The questions then turn to Anna. Though she barely responds, she answers exactly as Lloyd taught her. When asked how many points she would award her parents, Anna responds that they are wonderful parents she'd like to spend her life with, awarding them 100 points. Swan, frustrated, asks who her real mother is, but Lloyd intervenes. However, Swan hints at taking away their points, causing Anna to break down in tears. Swan, unmoved, chuckles and decides he doesn't want Anna at the college, prompting Lloyd to express his rage by smashing the table, citing a mosquito as an excuse for his outburst. After the tumultuous events at the college, Swan's manipulation of Anna's emotions leaves Henry furious. Swan, however, reminds Henry of his father's influence at the college, threatening his job if he takes action. Henry, a teacher who genuinely cares for the students, finally snaps and punches Swan. Unable to contain his rage any longer, Lloyd, dismayed by the outcome, realizes he let his emotions interfere for the first time. Yor and Anna comfort him, reassuring him that the other teachers will certify them, even in the worst-case scenario of having to abandon the operation. As the day of the findings approaches, the Forger family starts with optimism, but ominous signs appear, including prophecies, Yor's malfunctioning watch, and Anna stepping in feces. Lloyd dismisses these signs, but when he can't find Anna's name on the list, he realizes the prophecies came true. Henry intervenes, declaring the prophecy rude and showing them the list of qualified applicants, with Anna's name at the top. While Yor and Lloyd are relieved, Yor worries about what will happen if no one withdraws. Anna, determined and vows to take matters into her own hands if needed, berating herself for considering violence. Thankfully, a call comes and Anna is chosen, bringing joy to everyone. 
Frank arrives to celebrate, and Anne expresses her desire for a castle, like the one in her favorite anime, Bondman. Lloyd hesitates, but Frank reveals a local theme park with a rentable castle. With Emma's ultimatum, Lloyd agrees, sending a note to headquarters to arrange for Anna's gift, a request that wouldn't usually be granted. Lloyd made it clear that securing a castle is crucial for the plan, and headquarters consents, assigning senior agents and allocating funds for the rental. Soon, they board a plane and head to the castle, where every top agent is disguised as a servant or aristocrat, including those who once worked with Twilight on missions, a great honor for all. With everyone in position, Frank playing the role of the villain, abducts Anna as planned, and Lloyd, disguised as Bondman, rushes to her aid. Using his spy skills, he navigates through a barrage of obstacles and powerful opponents to reach Anna, who is thrilled to see her father going to such lengths for her. In the midst of the chaos, Lloyd faces an intoxicated adversary portraying a witch, whose uncontrolled powers make her deadly in combat. Instead of marveling at Guru's strength, Lloyd ponders the strategy behind a witch's combat techniques. Eventually, Lloyd manages to incapacitate her, allowing Anna to escape. After a challenging battle, Lloyd finally confronts the main villain and emerges victorious, saving Anna. Their success brings joy to all the agents and Anna pledges to excel in school. The next day, Anna's measurements are taken for her college uniform, but Lloyd sends Yord to pick it up as he needs to return to work. Outside the house, Lloyd meets Sylvia, who provides information on Phase 2 of the operation. Students at Eden College earn Stella points for academic excellence and community service, with the goal of becoming Imperial Scholars. Desmond, a cautious man, only attends events hosted by Imperial and students risk expulsion if they accumulate eight mantras bolts. Lloyd's next task is to ensure Anna becomes an Imperial Scholar in the upcoming phase of the plan. As you head to the store to pick up some items for your house after collecting Anna's outfit, you witness her exiting the store only to be kidnapped by four individuals. Remembering the store clerk's warning, you arrive just in time to prevent further harm. Furious, Anna warns them to leave or face consequences, showcasing her formidable strength. Terrified, the kidnappers flee, leaving you disappointed in your failure to protect Anna. Determined to prevent such incidents in the future, you and Anna practice combat skills at home. Finally, the day of orientation arrives, with chosen students and their parents in attendance. Lloyd focuses on Damon Desmond, the second son of Desmond, strategizing to befriend him as part of Plan B. Anna, aware of the plan, is shocked when she reads Damon's mind and discovers his perception of her as a spooky girl staring at him obnoxiously. In Anna's class, several students come from influential families and Lloyd hopes Anna will get along with everyone. However, Anna's refusal to acknowledge Becky's welcome leads to tension, as Becky sees Anna as a younger sibling to care for. Henry, the homeroom instructor, gives a tour and discusses the significance of becoming an imperial scholar. Trouble arises when Damien and his friends, learning that Anna's father is only a doctor, begin to bully her, labeling her as a peasant. Anna fights the urge to retaliate, recalling her mother's advice to control her emotions. With Yuan's prodding, Anna remembers to rise above such situations, determined to be the bigger person. Despite the forgiveness offered with a smile, Anna is elated to no longer be seen as a child by Becky. However, Damon is furious and vows to make Anna's school life miserable, along with his friends who continue to harass her. Anna, who had developed a high level of tolerance, loses control and the harassment crosses a line, delivering a powerful punch that sends Damon fleeing. Henry intervenes, learning of the ongoing torment Anna endured, but Anna's violence shocks him, even though it was in defense of Becky. Henry acknowledges Anna's self-control but contacts Lloyd to explain the situation. Lloyd, dismayed by his plot unraveling, learns that Anna only receives one punishment bolt due to Henry's intervention. The next morning, Lloyd worries about the failure of Plan B, but Anna expresses remorse and pledges to make amends with Damon. As Lloyd heads to work and Anna to school, Anna attempts to apologize to Damon, but Becky's interruption leads to further misunderstandings. Anna's reputation in class worsens as most students despise her, but Becky reassures her. Meanwhile, Desmond, accustomed to luxury, feels degraded by Anna's actions and seeks revenge. Despite Anna's attempts to reconcile, Becky's interference exacerbates tensions, leaving Anna fearful. Determined to take action, Desmond sends Anna subtle hints, including messages hidden in objects like a book or a note, signaling his intentions to confront her. Frustrated by Becky's relentless interference, Henry summons her to the student hall, determined to put an end to it. Meanwhile, Anna approaches Damon, who is initially shocked by her sincerity and emotional turmoil. As Anna hears Yuan's thoughts, contemplating derogatory nicknames for her, she tearfully apologizes to Damon, hoping to make amends. Despite her heartfelt apology, Damon remains skeptical and leaves, refusing to forgive her out of pride. Feeling defeated, Lloyd believes Plan B has failed. The next day, he forces Anna to study relentlessly, hoping to salvage the situation. 
However, Anna's mental anguish reaches its limit, and she locks herself in her room, ignoring Lloyd's pleas. Despite understanding Anna's need for space, Lloyd feels he crossed a line and apologizes for interfering in her family matters. Lloyd reassures Anna of her importance to him, emphasizing that she is still his wife and an integral part of their family. Despite not being her biological father, Lloyd strives to be a perfect parent, understanding Anna's actions and thoughts. He informs Anna of her favorite spy and I'm starting soon and finds her asleep in her study, feeling reassured by her peaceful rest as he tucks her into bed and bids her good night. While traveling, Dominic encounters Yuri and congratulates him on his sister's marriage, expressing admiration for Lloyd. Yuri is shocked by the news as he had no prior knowledge of his sister's marriage. The scene shifts to the following day, where Sylvia assumes Anna would have received Stella points by now, considering Lloyd's choice. Despite Lloyd's reassurance, Sylvia warns him about the recent operations of foreign spies and advises him to be cautious. At City Hall, Howard, a seasoned employee, is detained for leaking private information to outsiders. Yuri, the newest officer from the state security services, interrogates Howard. Despite his young age, Yuri's expertise in his role is evident. Yuri, driven by his complex regarding his sister's safety, swiftly extracts information from Howard, revealing the existence of a top spy named Twilight. Yuri punishes Howard for betraying their nation by breaking his nose. Returning home, Yuri informs his family about his visit, reassuring them about the marriage. However, Anna falls asleep while eagerly awaiting her uncle's arrival. Yuri wonders why his sister delayed informing him about her marriage for a whole year. Lloyd extends a warm welcome to Yuri, who begins speaking directly, signaling a significant conversation ahead. Yuri questions why Anna didn't inform him of her marriage earlier. Initially, Lloyd considers being honest, explaining that they got married because Anna needed a mother figure and he didn't want to raise suspicions by being single. However, Anna opposes this idea knowing Yuri's sensitivity and fear that he might cause trouble if he learns she married someone she didn't love. She assures Lloyd that she'll handle the situation delicately to ease Yuri's concerns. During dinner, Yuri remains upset with Lloyd for cutting off their conversation. He expects the food to be terrible, but is surprised to find it delicious. Yuri brings some juice as a gift, intending to make Lloyd drunk to reveal his true identity. However, seeing Anna and Lloyd already on friendly terms disappoints Yuri, who ends up drinking too much of the juice. As Yuri becomes more inebriated, Lloyd subtly assesses the situation. When Yuri mentions being in Hagara before arriving, Lloyd recognizes this as a tactic taught by the intelligence service. Lloyd calmly handles Yuri's inquiries, but as Yuri becomes increasingly agitated, Anna accidentally spills some juice while trying to calm him down. As she tries to clean, her hand accidentally brushes against Lloyd's and they both quickly pull away. Yuri is surprised by their reaction, wondering why a married couple would blush at such a small touch. Despite Yuri and Lloyd's attempts to reassure him of their love, Yuri insists on seeing them kiss. He threatens to annul their marriage if they don't comply. Lloyd, who has been in similar situations before, remains unfazed. He gazes into Ur's eyes and assures her they'll handle it as they always do. Ur, feeling the pressure to maintain the facade, drinks some juice to boost her confidence. As they lean in for a kiss, Yuri panics and rushes to intervene, unable to bear seeing his sister kiss someone else. In her intoxicated state, Ur misunderstands and slaps him, thinking he's trying to stop their kiss. Yuri, wounded, apologizes for doubting their love before collapsing from his injuries. Witnessing the bond between the siblings, Lloyd expresses gratitude to Yuri for protecting Ur. However, he also realizes he needs to remain vigilant, knowing Yuri may return to uncover any deception. He begins to check for bugs in the house regularly. The next day, Anna discovers she missed meeting her uncle and learns from Lloyd's thoughts that he's in the secret police. Disheartened by the revelation, she worries about the implications for their family. Lloyd, meanwhile, starts to suspect Ur's involvement with the secret police, but he's torn because it could jeopardize their plans. Anna, concerned about her parents' relationship, urges them to reconcile before heading to school. Lloyd is impressed by how observant children can be, while Yuri at work briefly considers placing bugs in Lloyd's house, but dismisses the idea, realizing he couldn't handle hearing their voices at night. Meanwhile, at City Hall, her feels disheartened, believing she's failing as a cook and wife. Seeking guidance from her colleagues, she's met with criticism instead, being told she doesn't deserve her husband. Unbeknownst to Yuri, Lloyd overhears their conversation and questions why she's striving to improve their family dynamic when it's all just a facade. Determined to investigate further, he and Frank disguise themselves as secret police officers and confront Ur after she mails a letter. They discover secret codes within the letter, leading to a tense interrogation where Ur denies knowledge of its contents. Lloyd threatens severe punishment for her perceived betrayal but offers leniency if any family members are involved. Despite Frank's aggression, Ur stands her ground asserting her loyalty to her husband. 
Lloyd warns of the consequences for her family's safety if she doesn't cooperate, but eventually realizes his suspicion was unfounded. Apologizing for the misunderstanding, Lloyd lets Berg go, relieved that she and her family are safe. Berg leaves without saying a word, grateful for the reprieve. Lloyd realizes that Gru has genuinely become attached to her family, feeling remorseful for doubting her. Frank, surprised by Lloyd's change of heart, warns him of the danger of becoming too attached to their fictitious family, potentially jeopardizing their mission. In the evening, Lloyd meets Ur while they're traveling and uses the excuse of cleaning dirt off her collar to discreetly remove a listening device. Ur expresses regret for not living up to her role as a wife and mother, but Lloyd reassures her, emphasizing the challenges of parenthood and the importance of gradual improvement. Ur is grateful for Lloyd's understanding and feels lucky to have him as her husband. Meanwhile, Anna returns home to leave to find that the situation has been resolved. Lloyd, concerned about Anna's upcoming test, ensures she stays focused on her studies. However, he notices her growing distress and decides to shift focus to non-academic activities to help her relax. Despite trying various activities like playing musical instruments and tennis, Anna struggles to unwind. Lloyd takes her to a hospital for volunteer work, hoping it will help. Unfortunately, Anna continues to make mistakes, frustrating the nurse. Suddenly, a boy named Ken falls into the rehabilitation pool and calls for help. Anna, realizing she's the only one who noticed, rushes to his aid, pretending to be training as a swimmer. She jumps into the pool to rescue Ken, but loses consciousness. Thankfully, Lloyd arrives in time to save them both. Everyone is relieved to see Anna and Ken are safe, unaware of the true nature of the incident. Lloyd expresses gratitude to Anna for her impulsive decision to swim, which saved Ken's life. Ken thanks Anna for her bravery and news of her heroism spreads quickly, earning her recognition and her first Stella Award. Both Lloyd and Ruhr are proud of Anna, and she basks in the newfound attention, feeling like a celebrity. However, Anna's popularity comes with its own challenges. Despite her newfound fame, she faces accusations of cheating from her classmates, adding to her frustration. Surprisingly, Damien comes to her defense, insisting that their school wouldn't award a Stella without proper investigation. This only fuels Damien's anger, seeing Anna surpassing him. During lunch, Becky suggests Anna consider a better reward than peanuts, like a pet. Anna decides to ask for a dog after learning from Damien's thoughts that he has one. She hopes it will lead to an invitation to his house and restore peace. At home, Anna asks Lloyd for a dog, suggesting a tiny and cute one to alleviate Ur's concerns about safety. Lloyd, initially inclined towards a guard dog, agrees to Anna's choice since it's her gift. They head to the pet store where the shop owner, secretly working for Wise, presents various dogs. Lloyd considers guard dogs, but Anna shows no interest. Ultimately, Anna's happiness trumps all as they head home empty-handed, excited for the prospect of welcoming a new furry friend into the family. The pet shop owner suggests they visit a nearby pet adoption center. Just as they're about to go, another agent contacts Lloyd, who suddenly feels unwell. He instructs Anna and Ur to proceed without him, despite their insistence on waiting. Anna, reading Lloyd's mind, advises him to go ahead without them due to his lengthy restroom breaks. Blushing, Ur agrees, and they head to the shelter. Though Anna appreciates Lloyd's gesture, he worries she may have crossed the line. Lloyd heads to headquarters, where he meets another spy. In the command center, they learn that a child named Chris has been captured. The West African foreign minister, Brands, is in Berlin and students plan to attack him. Sylvia informs them that Chris's boss has been apprehended, relieving Chris from further questioning. In shock, Chris sees his boss, Keith, handcuffed. Keith blames Chris for the incident, leading to Chris revealing critical information about their plans. Lloyd, disguised effectively, learns of a plot involving bombs carried by trained dogs. This revelation alarms everyone, as trained dogs are hard to control. Realizing the seriousness of the situation, a meeting is arranged to take action. Luke is tasked with leaking information to the secret police to prevent the attack, while Lloyd plans to raid the hideouts and apprehend the students and dogs with other agents' help. As Anna and Ur enter the pet adoption center, Anna is thrilled to see all the adorable animals. Outside, she spots a huge fluffy dog and feels a strange connection to it, as if it knows her family. Curious, she sneaks away to the building where the dog was taken. Inside, she finds many restrained dogs and overhears Keith and other students discussing their plan to assassinate Westall's foreign minister. Anna panics and tries to escape, but Kurt, one of the classmates, catches her. Keith, not willing to leave any witnesses, moves to kill Anna, but the white dog suddenly escapes and stands in front of her protectively. When Keith tries to coax the dog away, Anna realizes the dog is afraid. As Keith approaches, Anna sees a vision of a phone call, which later alerts Keith that their hiding places are being searched. Meanwhile, Ur grows increasingly worried about Anna's disappearance, fearing she might have been kidnapped. She recalls recent news stories about young girls being abducted and sold, adding to her anxiety. 
remembering a dog dragging Anna away in her thoughts, or realizes the dog possesses a unique power like her own. Anna confidently heads towards the scene, able to foresee the future, while Yura is ecstatic, ready to assist in saving the world and earning another Stella Award. However, they're shocked to find the dogs circling without attacking and are eventually apprehended by Keith. Kurt tries to grab Anna, but she knocks him out with a swift kick just as Yura arrives. Keith, realizing Ur is Anna's mother, attempts to command the dogs to attack, but flees when he sees Ur's terrifying expression, leaving Anna and Ur safe but shaken. As people gather to investigate, Keith escapes, unwilling to risk further exposure. Anna apologizes to Ur for her recklessness and promises never to leave without informing her again. Ur shares what she learned about the bomb attack plans with the police, while Anna reads the white dog's mind, witnessing a horrifying scene of her father's death and a bell tolling from a clock tower. Determined to prevent her father's death and maintain world harmony, Anna mounts the dog and rushes towards the clock tower. However, she worries about revealing her abilities to her mother. Meanwhile, Wessel agents intercept calls made by Keith's group, and despite Kurt's capture, the other students remain defiant, refusing to divulge information even after Sylvia's stern admonitions. With only one hiding place remaining, Loy and the agents set off to investigate. As Keith realizes he's the last one left, the summit is only two hours away. Believing the people he thought were secret police are actually from Westall, he decides to plant a bomb to teach them a lesson. After detonating the bomb, he plans to attack the foreign minister alone, using a bomb-carrying dog. Meanwhile, Anna arrives at the clock tower, aware that the explosion occurs when the bell rings. An elderly man informs her that the bell will ring in roughly 30 minutes, but Anna struggles to grasp the concept of time. Despite this, she decides to proceed to the tower. As she approaches, the white dog barks, indicating danger. Anna realizes that opening the door will trigger the bomb, so she finds a way in through a window. Inside, she sees wires but panics when she realizes they're all black instead of the expected red. Thinking quickly, Anna spots a ketchup bottle left by the attackers. With Lloyd and the other agents arriving, they cautiously approach the tower. Anna signals to her father using the tower bell's chime, allowing Lloyd to discover the bomb attached to the door using a cracked mirror. Relieved that the bomb is defused, the agents are grateful to be alive. However, Lloyd realizes that they've been located by the secret police. After leaving the bomb deactivation to the agents, Keith flees and the foreign minister arrives for the summit, surprisingly without any security. It's revealed to be Lloyd in disguise, using the minister's clothing to lure Keith. The other agents locate Keith's car and attempt to apprehend him. During the chase, Keith throws a grenade, but Lloyd uses the dog's sense of smell to evade it. Keith releases the dog, intending to detonate the bomb when it bites the minister. However, Lloyd removes his disguise and disposes of the dog in the trash, causing Keith to realize his mistake and flee. Lloyd pursues Keith, who is later apprehended after Anna intervenes and calls the police. Afterwards, Lloyd heads to the animal adoption facility, where he encounters Ur and Anna. He recounts the events and scolds Anna for her impulsive behavior, reminding her of the danger they faced due to his assignment. Sylvia appears disguised as a member of the secret police to retrieve the white dog, but Anna insists on adopting him as he protected her. Despite objections, Sylvia agrees, promising to ensure the dog's health before sending him to Anna. With Anna's threat not to attend classes until she's allowed to take the dog home, Sylvia concedes, unwilling to compromise their operations. Meanwhile, Sylvia fondly reminisces about her daughter, Anna, as she smiles at Anna's happiness. The Forger family walks together with Anna and Ur excitedly heading towards the dog park, while Lloyd feels worn out from recent missions and operations. Finally, the dog arrives and Anna is overjoyed. She wastes no time and heads straight to the dog park with her family. However, upon arrival, Anna notices the owner yelling insults at their dog. Realizing she hasn't given the dog a name yet, Anna begins to ponder. As Anna plays with the white dog, Lloyd reflects on his past and vows to prevent others from experiencing the hardships he has endured. However, their joy is interrupted when Anna loses her gloves. Everyone searches for them, but Anna is frightened by a vicious dog. Thankfully, the white dog, whom Anna now calls Bond, comes to her rescue and retrieves the glove. Anna is shocked to encounter a character resembling Bondman, her favorite, who also saved her. Bond's black markings remind Anna of Bondman's gloves, leading her to choose the name Bond. The name resonates with everyone and Bond seems content despite his painful past experiences. When Anna returns to school, she learns that the attack on the foreign minister was covered up to protect Anya's reputation meaning she won't receive a Stella Award. Despite this disappointment, Anna shows Damien a new family portrait taken with Bond, feeling hopeful about the future and imagining her father thanking her with peanuts for the entire year. Anna deliberately misplaces the photo, hoping Damien will notice, but he ignores her, leaving her heartbroken. 
Becky advises Anna not to waste her time with boys like Damien and encourages her to focus on herself. Anna retrieves the photo and falls in love with her father's image. Becky suggests Anna introduce her father to her. In class, students are informed about upcoming midterm exams. Those who fail will receive a tonitrous bolt, a punishment. Anna, aware of who's thinking during exams, plans to study diligently. She asks her father about the moon's setting time during her exam, concerned her powers won't work during a lunar eclipse. Lloyd assures her and suggests Yuri, her uncle, as a daytime tutor. Yuri, initially furious to see Lloyd, reluctantly agrees to teach Anna. However, he's envious of Lloyd spending time with Anna daily. Despite this, Yuri vows to be gentle with Anna. Anna, noticing Yuri's concern for her mother, expresses her determination to excel in school to make her mother proud. As Yuri teaches Anna grammar, she struggles but eventually understands after hours of study. Yuri decides to leave Anna and study alone, determined not to fail the test. After some time, Lloyd returns and is upset to see Anna reading a book in a foreign language, which isn't one of the four core subjects. Two weeks later, the exams begin and Lloyd plans to review Anna's answers afterward. Disguised as a teacher, he enters the locker room, where the answer sheets are kept and quickly glances at Anna's paper. A few days later, the results are made public. Damien ranks 11th overall and receives Estella for his second best language grade. Becky ranks 46th, while Anna ranks 213th. Despite her low rank, Anna is thrilled to have avoided the Ida's Bolt punishment and proudly informs her father. Though strict, Lloyd secretly feels proud of Anna for her achievement without any alterations to her answers. Students are assigned to interview their parents about their careers after the exams. When Anna tells her mother about the task, Burke considers using it as an opportunity to break into a target's hideout. Anna overhears and decides to visit her father's workplace instead. The next day, she accompanies Lloyd to Berlin's largest hospital where he poses as a fictitious professional to interact with influential figures. Anna learns about the psychological impact of traumatic events from the hospital staff and notes it down. She also inquires about her father's performance, receiving praise from everyone for his diligence and dedication to his work. Anya asks her dad what's the hardest part of his job. Lloyd says it's tough for a psychiatrist because you can't see the problems in someone's heart and mind like you can with a physical illness. They go to Lloyd's room and Anya asks about a machine for changing brains. Lloyd says there's no such thing and wonders what kind of shows she's watching. Back home, every student shares their reports. When it's Anya's turn, she mixes up what Lloyd said with what she read from his mind. She talks about her dad being a psychiatrist who helps with mental illness, trying to build trust with his patients and fooling his colleagues by acting good. Everyone in class wonders what her dad really does. Sylvia gives Megfall a mission to complete with Lloyd. Fiona Frost, a spy, wants to join, but Sylvia says it's not necessary. Fiona thinks of ways to break up Lloyd's family to get ahead. She visits their house to return Anya's magnifying glass. Lloyd and Anya are out, so Fiona comes in. Fiona admires the family but tries to sow doubt out Lloyd's wife. Lloyd returns, using coded language to talk to Fiona without suspicion. Fiona questions why Lloyd is doing household chores instead of his wife, hinting at a problem. Lloyd, sensing her seriousness, asks for clarification. After reading a report on operations, Fiona realizes Lloyd is getting too comfortable with his fake family, so she decides to intervene to prevent any issues. Anya, reading their minds, wonders if Fiona is a villain. Shockingly, she discovers Fiona's deep love for Lloyd and her desire to be the perfect wife for him, hoping to replace Anya's mother. Fiona's true ambition is not just professional success but also winning Lloyd's affection and marrying him after their mission. Despite others fearing Fiona's ambition, her true goal is Lloyd's admiration. Meanwhile, Anya overhears Fiona's comments about Lloyd's complaints at the hospital and realizes Fiona's intentions. An accident with hot cocoa reveals Fiona's disdain for Anya's lack of motherly training, solidifying Anya's opposition to Fiona as her mother. Anya expresses her love for her real mother, Yuri, who reassures her and receives Lloyd's support. Fiona notices Lloyd's seemingly perfect smile, which unsettles her because she knows it's not genuine, leaving her feeling uneasy as she leaves. It's pouring rain outside, so Lloyd offers Fiona his umbrella. He asks her the reason for her visit. Fiona finally reveals they have a joint mission and she'll brief him on it tomorrow. However, her true motive is to show her capabilities to prove herself as a worthy wife. The next day, Lloyd learns about their mission targeting Kevin Campbell, a wealthy businessman with a valuable painting containing secret information. They plan to enter a tennis tournament organized by Campbell, where the winner can choose any antique, including the painting. Lloyd and Fiona disguise themselves as a couple and enter the tournament. In the first round, Lloyd's incredible strength and speed secure points, leading them to victory despite opponents using tricks. Fiona plays exceptionally well to prove herself. As they progress, they reach the final round against Campbell's talented children, Kim and Carol. 
Before the match, Lloyd notices Fiona's torn hand and expresses concern. Fiona, touched by his care, blushes, but Lloyd misunderstands, thinking he upset her. Suddenly, they realize the room is filling with a weakening chemical, trapping them. Despite the challenge, Campbell is confident his children will win, having bet heavily on them. On the betting side, everyone backs Lloyd and Fiona. The match kicks off and Kim and Carol dominate with their modified rackets, winning the first set easily. Those who bet on Lloyd and Fiona are angry. However, in the second set, the effects of the chemical wear off and Lloyd and Fiona regain their full strength. Despite traps set by Kim and Carol, including a rising net and strong winds, Lloyd and Fiona adapt and use them to their advantage. The situation escalates with snipers and ball boys shooting rubber bullets, but Lloyd and Fiona overcome it all with their incredible abilities, winning the game. Campbell, realizing his loss, is devastated. Kim congratulates Lloyd and receives praise for his talent in tennis. Campbell is pleased that his children learn a valuable lesson. A person whispers something to Campbell, raising suspicions for Lloyd. As Fiona selects the painting, Campbell reveals it's no longer for sale. Lloyd understands the security situation and switches the real painting with a fake one, ensuring its safety, while the authorities take it away. After successfully completing the mission, Lloyd and Fiona high-five each other in the car, celebrating their success. Along the way, Fiona wonders if Lloyd will accept her as his wife after her actions. They arrive and see Yuri playing tennis. Fiona challenges Yuri, surprising Lloyd, but Yuri accepts to show she's not a useless wife. The game begins and Yuri swings with all her might but misses the ball, worrying Fiona that Lloyd deserves better. However, Yuri's next serve breaks the ball, stunning Fiona. Yuri apologizes and serves again, holding back her strength, but the ball's power overwhelms Fiona, breaking her racket and leading to Yuri's victory. Fiona concedes, admitting Yuri's superiority, but vows to return for a rematch and to win over Lloyd. Yuri hopes for praise from Lloyd, but he only says she did nice, leaving her unsatisfied. The next day, feeling useless, Yuri struggles with cooking despite secretly learning from Camilla. A neighbor notices her sadness, leading to gossip about infidelity. Lloyd hears and realizes the misunderstanding, so he arranges to clarify things with Yuri. He meets her for a drink to discuss. Yuri wonders if her days as Lloyd's wife are numbered, but decides to respect his feelings for Fiona. However, she struggles to voice her true feelings, ending up drinking a lot of juice instead. After getting drunk quickly, Yuri asks Lloyd if he's in love with Fiona. Lloyd tries to clarify their relationship, but Yuri, not listening, compares herself unfavorably to Fiona, acknowledging her efforts to be a better mother and wife. Lloyd realizes Yuri's jealousy and romantic feelings for him, contrary to his earlier assumption of her attachment to Anya. He seizes the opportunity and expresses his newfound love for her, proposing marriage. However, Yuri reacts by kicking Lloyd with full force, sending him flying. Lloyd pretends to be fine, but he's seriously injured, realizing he was too overconfident. He dreams of his mother's comforting lullabies, only to wake up to Yuri singing the same lullaby. Lloyd, still in a drunken state, apologizes for being a useless wife, but Lloyd reassures her, recalling the strength of his own mother during difficult times. He emphasizes Yuri's importance as a strong mother figure, Anya, assuring her that Anya would never accept Fiona as her mother due to Fiona's lack of parenting skills. Lloyd requests Yuri to continue being Anya's mother and his wife, and Yuri promises to do her best. They walk home together after a lovely night. The next day, there's a social gathering for Imperial scholars and their parents, including Donovan Desmond, whose son Demetrius is an Imperial scholar. Lloyd knows the crucial opportunity to get close to Desmond without raising suspicion. Disguising as a waiter or someone else's parent could jeopardize the mission. Assassination isn't an option, as continuous interaction and gathering information are necessary to prevent war. Lloyd plans to approach Desmond as himself. In school, everyone asks Damien to meet his father, but Damien hesitates, nervous about facing his busy father. Lloyd panics, realizing Damien's meeting with Desmond is his chance to get close to him. Fortunately, Anya overhears Lloyd's thoughts and encourages Damien to meet his father, reassuring him with her own experience. Damien agrees, and Lloyd is proud of Anya's clever intervention. At the social gathering, Lloyd approaches Damien and his friend to ask about Anya's keychain. Damien returns it, and Lloyd continues his act, unknowingly addressing Damien as if he were Anya's father. When Desmond arrives, Lloyd tries to get closer, but a guard stops him. Damien intervenes, revealing Lloyd's identity as his classmate's father, allowing Lloyd to talk to Desmond. Lloyd introduces himself and apologizes for Anya's behavior, offering a gift as an apology, but Desmond dismisses it as a minor squabble between children. Damien insists his father should take it seriously, supported by Lloyd. Despite this, Desmond remains composed. Damien, frustrated, questions why his father can't get angry on his behalf, but Desmond's expression silences him. 
Lloyd shares the challenges of parenting and the importance of understanding children's behavior. Desmond agrees, noting that even one's own child can seem like a stranger at times. Lloyd begins to grasp the reasoning behind Desmond's actions and agrees that parenting comes with its difficulties. He reflects on the challenges of understanding others, even as a psychiatrist. Recognizing the need for communication, Lloyd steers the conversation towards ideology, aiming to find common ground. Lloyd emphasizes the importance of standing by each other despite differences with one's child, aiming for understanding and acceptance. Desmond agrees with Lloyd's perspective. Lloyd shares how Anya's project revealed Damien's admiration for his father's concern for the nation, which melts Desmond's heart. He praises Lloyd as an interesting man but has to leave due to time constraints. Lloyd thanks him and takes note of Desmond's bodyguards before leaving. He reassures Damien that Anya doesn't dislike him and wants to be his friend. Damien blushes but denies the possibility. Later, Damien bravely shares his achievements with his father, who praises him bringing Damien happiness. Observing their interaction, Lloyd gains insight into Desmond's relationship with his son, marking significant progress in Operation Strix. Lloyd then returns home. The season starts and we see Yor talks to her boss on the phone to confirm the job's done. She plans to pick up milk and eggs for Lloyd before heading home. Unaware that one of her targets is still alive, he shoots at her. At home, Lloyd, Anna, and Bond watch a news report about the Red Circus terrorists' demise. Anna's bored, so she asks to watch cartoons instead. Lloyd hesitates but gives in to Anna's request. When Mir returns home with groceries, Lloyd notices her irritated expression. Mir reveals she got shot in the butt, shocking Anna. Lloyd mistakenly thinks she was upset about running errands and plans a date to cheer her up. Yor, still in pain, agrees, hoping to learn to act like a married woman. Anna wants to join, but Lloyd refuses. Frankie agrees to babysit Anna and Bond. Lloyd plans an elaborate date, but Yor's pain limits their options. Anna proposes they shadow Lloyd and Yor on their date, wanting to see Lloyd's seduction skills. Frankie agrees, and they disguise themselves. Despite their efforts, Lloyd spots them but pretends not to. He takes Yor to a mass, they continue their date, Lloyd takes Yor to various places like the cinema, club, pond, spa, and zoo, hoping to lift her spirits. However, Yor's pain makes it hard for her to enjoy the date, and Lloyd feels disheartened by her lack of enthusiasm. Meanwhile, Frankie teases Lloyd for his failed attempts, and he and Anna banter while trying to enter an upscale restaurant. Inside the restaurant, Anna senses someone recognizing Yor as an assassin. The waiter turns out to be a survivor of the Red Circus group Yor eliminated, seeking revenge. Concerned that Yor's identity might endanger their family, Anna convinces Frankie to help her spy on the restaurant. As Lloyd and Yor order drinks, the former Red Circus member tries to poison Yor with blowfish toxin. However, Yor's high tolerance to poison prevents any harm. Despite this failure, the Red Circus member tries to create a bomb from items in the storeroom. Anna, hidden in the vents, rushes to stop him. In the storeroom, the Red Circus member's clumsiness causes a non-lethal explosion with peanuts, Anna confronts him, warning him to stay away from Yor and make his girlfriend happy, all and suggests a suit for her to wear. The former Red Circus member faints in shock when a child, seemingly affiliated with the Thorn Princess, knows personal details about him. Before passing out, he decides to live a normal life. Yor, now pain-free, chats happily with Lloyd about the restaurant's food, relieving him. Meanwhile, Frankie and Anna watch from a distance, with Anna proud of her help and Frankie wondering where she disappeared earlier. As Lloyd and Yor admire the city's night scenery, Yor expresses gratitude for the date and hopes for more outings in the future. Spotting a carnival, Lloyd suggests they visit it, and Anna eagerly tags along, wanting to ride the Ferris wheel. The next day, the numbing poison wears off, and Yor is once again in pain, confusing Lloyd. Bond, lounging on the couch, has a vision of darkness and fears for his life. He imagines his family mourning him, but resolves to accept his fate. As Bond frets, he remembers Yor forgot to buy dog food and decides to cook his dinner. However, he panics, fearing Yor's cooking might kill him. Despite his resolve to refuse the food, he worries about upsetting Yor. Bond thrashes around the house but comes up with a plan. If Lloyd comes home early, he can make Bond's dinner, potentially saving him. The family dog unlocks the door, and Bond runs off to find Lloyd. He locates Lloyd outside a facility where Lloyd plans to steal a sample of Jamus, a truth serum. Bond insists on accompanying him, fearing Lloyd's safety. Lloyd, confused by Bond's knowledge, realizes that Bond might seek revenge against the scientists involved in Project Apple. Lloyd allows Bond to join him on their mission as they infiltrate a facility. Inside the laboratory full of specimen lockers, they search for the serum they need. While Lloyd works, Bond has another vision, foreseeing the staff's return. Lloyd instructs Bond to hide while he deals with them. Bond becomes anxious and leaves a note pretending the serum has been stolen, 
tricking the staff into checking the locker. When they open it, Lloyd and Bond jump out, knocking them unconscious. Lloyd retrieves the sample, thanking Bond and allowing him to go home early. The next morning, an alarm wakes up the residents of Eden Academy dorm. Amil, Edberg, and Damon are roused from sleep. As punishment for staying up all night, Damon is assigned chores and restricted from leaving the school until he finishes. Yan and Emil, worried for Damon, decide to support him. Seeing their unkempt appearance, Henderson punishes them too, which they accept eagerly. Damon's friends join him in session, determined to help him earn more Stella stars and go to the movies together. They hope to impress Damon's father with their hard work. Damien insists his friends go ahead without him, but they stay to help him with chores anyway. Yan suggests they pretend to be imperial scholars, wrapping sheets around themselves like cloaks. Henderson watches them play and reflects on the elegance of youthful friendship. While doing chores, Mr. Green jokes that Damien looks like he'd rather be at a picnic embarrassing Damien. Henderson decides to punish them further by sending them on a field trip with Mr. Green. During a fast-paced Kenny ride, Damien falls into the water and Yan and Amel jump in after him. They decide to let Damien fulfill his dreams, but Mr. Green interrupts, revealing the water is shallow. Afterward, they fish for dinner, finding earthworms for bait. Damien is frightened by them, and Yan and Emil chase him with the worms. Eventually, they catch fish and enjoy their meal. Mr. Green tells Damien it's okay to have fun sometimes. Next, they visit Stella Lake, amazed by its beauty. Despite not seeing actual stars, Damien enjoys lying down with his friends, gazing at the sky. Emil compares the stars to sugar sprinkled on the sky, making Damien burst into laughter. Mr. Green reminds them to write a proper field report before they head back. Upon returning to the dorm, Mr. Green hands over the reports to Henderson, who notes Damien's report needs improvement due to its brevity. Meanwhile, Yuri and his captain successfully arrest individuals involved in an illegal deal, ensuring men escape. Shortly after, Yuri receives a new assignment to investigate Franklin Perkin, a former reporter for writing slanderous articles about Anya. Despite Yuri overworking himself, he accepts the assignment happily. He surveys Franklin without leaving a trace, impressing his lieutenant. Concerned for Yuri's well-being, the lieutenant suggests he takes a break, noticing Yuri's reaction to words resembling Nora's name. Yuri hears Franklin leaving his home and shadows him with the lieutenant. They witness Franklin interfering with boys playing and intimidating them when confronted. While surveilling Franklin writing his article, Yuri overhears a conversation between him and his father. Franklin expresses frustration about making a better country for his family and struggles to make ends meet. Yuri sympathizes with Franklin's motives briefly before discarding his thoughts. Yuri realizes Franklin mails his articles from the post office. Four days later, Yuri and SSS agents arrest Franklin outside his home. Despite his acceptance of the situation, Franklin appreciates the officer's respect for his family's privacy as he's handcuffed. As Franklin is escorted away, he questions Yuri about who is truly pathetic, the one fighting tyranny or the one serving as its lapdog. Yuri responds, stating he would never do anything to cause his sister pain. He promises to apply for financial assistance for Franklin's father. At headquarters, Yuri's boss praises him, saying he's proud of him in his new job. Yuri declares his determination to catch Twilight one day. Later, he visits the forger's home with Lloyd, Yor, and Anna. When Yor asks if something's wrong, Yuri says he just wants to see her face. Yor reads his mind and pats him, while Yor also praises him and makes tea for everyone. Meanwhile, in the latest episode of Spy Wars, Bondman is on a mission with his partner, Agent M, who confesses her love for him. They resolve the conflict, allowing them to be together. However, Bondman's numerous love interests from various backgrounds become angry and demand he choose one. Refusing, he's brutally beaten, realizing danger comes with being a spy. On the rooftop of an apartment store, Anna sees large electric plush animals to ride on. Despite Lloyd's initial reluctance, he allows her to ride the panda one when she starts crying. Later, Anna wants to go to the ocean but settles for the pool. Initially having fun, she overhears thoughts of other kids peeing in the pool, shocking and disgusting her. Back at home, Anna declares she never wants to go to the pool again, leaving Lloyd confused. In Cecil Hall's boys' dormitory, Yan and Amil wake up for morning muster, impressed by Damien's dedication to studying. At the forger's home, Lloyd struggles to wake Anna up to catch the bus on time, but she remains asleep, making her late for school. Meanwhile, at Eden Academy, the pastry of knowledge is considered one of the wonders of the school. Rumored to make one instantly smarter, it's said that those who eat it become imperial scholars. During lunch, Anna and Becky discuss the news that students will be separated based on their performance in the upcoming term. They overhear boys gossiping about the limited sale of the pastry of knowledge made by a former royal chef. Excited by the prospect of becoming a genius, Anna rushes to the dining hall with Becky. They find a crew of students lined up for the pastries, including Damon and his friends. 
However, they are disappointed to learn there's only one set left ordered by George Glone. Damon and Becky demand he share the pastries, reminding him of the debt he owes them. Reluctantly, George agrees to give up four out of the five McCarrens in the set. The other kids realize they need a fair way to decide who gets the McCarrens and suggest playing a round of Old Maid. Anna, unfamiliar with card games, wins using her mind reading abilities, causing suspicion from Damien and his friends who accuse her of cheating. Panicking, Anna suggests playing another round where she intentionally makes mistakes, but she struggles to hide her facial expressions, making it impossible to get rid of the Joker card. As Damien is about to take a card, he notices Anna tearing up and decides to take the old maid, losing the game. After getting her macaron, Anna offers to share it with Damien, who angrily rejects her. Emil, Yan, Becky, and Anna enjoy their macarons, and Anna feels energized, studying fervently until the next day's quizzes. When the results come back, Anna's scores disappoint her, leaving her and the others in disbelief. Becky tries to cheer her up, reminding her of the upcoming finals. At home, Lloyd and Yor look at Anna's quiz papers, noting her strong performance in classical language despite spelling mistakes. Lloyd brushes it off and prepares Anna's favorite Hamburg steak for dinner, which cheers her up. Your adds that she tried making dessert and Bond barks in horror. Later, Lloyd visits Frankie's store to pick up some intel for an extra mission. Despite Frankie's reluctance, Lloyd insists on getting the pictures he requested. Frankie then asks for Lloyd's help finding a missing cat named Kopi, belonging to Casey, a woman he's trying to impress. Uninterested, Lloyd leaves, leaving Frankie frustrated. Frankie, desperate to find Kopi, enlists yours help during her lunch break. They use Frankie's inventions to locate Kopi, but a catnip device draws in a crowd of cats, causing chaos. Your manages to spot Kopi among the cats, but Frankie's attempts to catch him fail. Resorting to his exoskeleton power suit, Frankie chases Kopi, but when the cat heads towards a busy street, Yord intervenes, using a piece of the exoskeleton to stop Kopi and allowing her to capture him. Despite losing years of work on his invention, Frankie returns Kopi to Casey, only to discover she already has a boyfriend. Frankie wishes them well but leaves feeling dejected, resolving to focus on his work. Yor returns to City Hall in a cheerful mood, but her colleagues notice her unusually high spirits, when she receives a call from her special contact addressed as the Thorn Princess, informing her of a new client, she and her colleague head to a garden maintained by the shopkeeper. After successfully dodging an unexpected attack, the shopkeeper briefs Yor on her latest assignment, protecting the surviving members of the Gretter family aboard the cruise ship Princess Lore. Initially hesitant due to concerns about her cover, work, and home, Yor learns that Garden has prepared a cover story for her. With her mind at ease, Yor gladly accepts the assignment. On her way home, Yor contemplates how to motivate herself and runs into Yuri on the subway. As they chat, Yor asks Yuri if he's taking care of himself. Yuri reassures her that he's grown up and reliable. Yor reflects on Yuri's maturity and wonders why she continues her assassin job. Meanwhile, the mall hosts the mega raffle, with the grand prize being tickets for a cruise ship voyage. Anna asks Lloyd for the raffle ticket to try her luck and discovers the event is rigged using her telepathy. She pulls out the winning ticket. At home, Anna excitedly shows you where the tickets, but you'll reveal she's already going on the same boat for work. Anna starts screaming about wanting to go and Lloyd reluctantly agrees to ask for time off. To his surprise, Sylvia accepts his request, allowing him to join them. On the big day, as they head to the port, Anna is thrilled while Yor feels conflicted about her assignment. At the port, Yor bids farewell to her family, promising to contact them. Suspicious figures also board the ship. Anna explores the ship's facilities, excitedly knowing a pool, circus, and game room. However, she's disappointed by their cramped suite, but quickly recovers, excited about sleeping on a bunk bed for the first time. Lloyd suggests Yor's group is likely in first class with dignitaries. Yor's colleague introduces himself to a man and woman with a child, who Yor deduces to be Alla Gretter and her family traveling incognito. The man wonders if Yor can protect Alla despite her slim appearance. The Greys are offered a tour of the ship, but Alla declines to take care of her baby. As the group leaves, Farrell expresses concern about leaving them alone, but Matthew assures him that Yor is capable. Alone with Alla, Yor inspects the suite for possible escape routes. Alla confides in Yor, revealing that Farrell is a member of her crew playing a part. She expresses her desire for a quiet life with her son and requests to go outside for a moment. Despite hesitation, Yor agrees, reassured by Alla's trust. In the ship's atrium, Anna insists they explore the ship before it sinks, embarrassing Lloyd. Observing the ship, Lloyd notes its potential vulnerability to terrorism and resolves to stay vigilant. Remembering Sylvia's advice, he decides to focus on enjoying the trip and suggests watching a show with Anna. Yor explains to Alla that her family's presence on the ship is coincidental and that they're unaware of her real job. Alla asks if they're part of her cover identity, 
to which York confirms the tender look. Alla's son cries, reminding them of their plan to go outside. Before they leave, Alla offers Yor some clothes for a disguise. Outside, Alla expresses nostalgia about leaving her old life behind. Yor promises to finish the job for Alla and her son, moving Alla, who reveals her son's name is Graham, named after her father. She offers to let Yor hold him. Unbeknownst to them, their conversation is captured by a listening bug, allowing an informant to locate Alla's cabin room in Berlin. Meanwhile, Camilla, Millie, and Sharon discuss Yor's work trip during their dinner. Millie invites Yor's fancy dinner aboard the cruise, imagining the luxurious experience, while Sharon and Camilla are content with their simple beer and sausages. On Princess Lore, Yor struggles to enjoy the fancy dinner with her Sea Hall group and the Grey family, feeling too nervous to taste anything. Matthew McMahon kicks Yor's chair and whispers to her to calm down, reminding her that the enemy wouldn't attack in public and that her family isn't allowed in the restaurant on their deck, so they need to maintain their cover. After dinner, the men head to the lower deck for drinks while Yor escorts Alla and Graham back to their room. Alla notes the lack of trouble during the day, but Yor insists they must remain vigilant as they don't know the enemy's plans. Yor predicts the enemy will strike at the last possible moment, likely the next day. After reassuring Alla of their safety, Alla asks about their plan if they escape, prompting Yor to explain their cover story. Alla suggests Yor could use the stop at her resort island to reunite with her family, but Yor hesitates. On the lower deck, Lloyd and Anna have dinner at a buffet. Anna, hungry from playing all day, enjoys the food but comments on the strangeness of dining without Yor. Lloyd agrees and gets flustered when Anna teases him, urging her to finish her meal so they can return to their room. Meanwhile, Syl, Matthew, and the other men walk around after drinking at the bar. Matthew spots a man shadowing them and pretends to have left something at the bar to confront him. Matthew restrains the assassin, interrogating him and learning about other assassins working independently. The assassin reveals getting his intel from an informant who knows Alla's identity and cabin number. After disposing of the assassin's body, Matthew fills Syl in on the situation and they rush to their cabin. On the way, Matthew asks if Zeb contacted anyone, learning he called his parents but said nothing important. They focus on their current predicament as enemies had no intention of waiting. Back in Alla's cabin, the women hear a knock on the door. Yor checks the peephole and sees what appears to be room service, but Alla denies ordering anything. Yor senses danger and swiftly moves Alla out of harm's way as gunfire erupts at the door. As the assailant reloads his gun and attempts to enter the room, his hands are struck by darts from Matthew and Seb, who arrive just in time. The attacker focuses on the two men, but Yor acts quickly, hurling her stiletto through the door and pinning his head to the wall, killing him instantly. After retrieving the corpse, Matthew briefs the group and directs Yor to take them to a vacant room in the second-class suite while he deals with the aftermath. He warns her to avoid further confrontation to prevent the ship from returning to port due to a public incident. Armed with masks to disguise themselves, Yor leads Ala, Zeb, and Graham to the second deck lounge. Meanwhile, the informant confirms the group of assassins that Shady Grey is their target and that she and her guards have changed rooms. Among the group, an assassin takes charge, proposing cooperation if their opponents are from Garden, and they agree to split the bounty evenly. Another assassin suggests killing all women with babies, but he is silenced by the leader, emphasizing they are not psychopaths. After disposing of the body, the leader instructs them to avoid drawing unnecessary attention and assures the informant that information will be shared. As they navigate the halls, Phil remarks that the masks make them conspicuous, but Yor assures him they'll blend in at the masquerade ball being held in the second lounge. She notices they're being followed and decides to lose their pursuer before reaching their destination. Your plans to blend into the crowd at the lounge and create a disturbance to evade detection. As Yor and her group arrive at the ball, she immediately senses the bloodlust of the enemy lurking in the crowd. Remembering she cannot cause a scene, Yor grabs a button from Sil's suit nearby. When an assassin rises from his chair, she swiftly throws the button, knocking him unconscious and back into his seat. Another assassin, Andrew, is dispatched to kill Allah. But Yor intervenes, pretending she was invited to a dance and leading Andrew away. She crushes his hand and knocks him out before returning to the others, and they head to the shopping promenade in the second-class area. Meanwhile, Anna and Lloyd are also at the shopping promenade. Anna throws a tantrum when Lloyd refuses to buy her a skeleton keychain, deeming it invaluable for her education. Lloyd stresses over the risks of his choices, realizing their conversation is likely being heard. Anna overhears the thoughts of Hitman Barnaby, who plans to take Alla's bounty for himself. She fears that Yor will expose her identity to Lloyd, causing the family to break apart. As Barnaby approaches Yor's group, Anna watches with apprehension knowing Lloyd will see the battle if he steps outside the shop. She worries about the situation, unable to express her concern clearly to Lloyd. 
Lloyd, believing the trip is part of an operation, struggles to understand Anna's behavior and tries to reassure her by flattering her. He then recalls Sylvia's advice to treat the trip seriously, realizing the gravity of the situation. As the souvenir shop employee approaches Lloyd with souvenir apparel, he initially refuses, focused on Anna. Anna speaks up, claiming she feels dragged down by Lloyd's lack of fun, prompting him to decide to transform himself to become a more upbeat father. Lloyd asks for every article of clothing the shop has and heads into the fitting room to change. Anna gets ready to help Yor, but when she realizes Lloyd is taking a while to finish getting dressed, she is assured he will be occupied for some time. After protecting Alla and her group from Barnaby's attack, Yor tells them to fall back. Observing Barnaby's weapon, Yor notes it's a mid-range weapon and decides to take him down in close range. However, Barnaby's skill with the chain prevents her from getting closer. A crowd gathers around the fighters and Yor spots Anna cheering her on. Initially terrified, Yor is relieved when Anna pretends not to recognize her and convinces the onlookers it's a circus performance. As her continues to close the gap between her and Barnaby, she hesitates and begins to overthink her next move. Barnaby, noticing Anna and the crowd, freezes up, allowing Yor to charge at him. Despite his attempts to attack, Yor manages to weave through his strikes, immobilizing him and finishing the performance with a bow. The impressed onlookers quickly disperse as Yor takes Barnaby away. Meanwhile, Anna hears Lloyd finally finishing with his outfit and hurries back to the shop. She revels in the knowledge that she helped Yor without Lloyd suspecting a thing and is thrilled by the experience. Matthew orders Yor to watch the door while he patrols the floor to reduce the enemy's numbers. Zeb is baffled by the composed assassins, and Matthew explains that conflict will never end as long as people are the way they are, emphasizing their duty as soldiers fighting for their country. He sternly warns Yor not to drop her guard, reminding her of the stakes. As the group rests, Yor remembers she didn't reach out to Lloyd and Anna and imagines being with them. She realizes she was dragging her feet out of fear during her fight with Barnaby, afraid of losing her cover and family. Remembering Alla's question about the forgers being just a cover, Yor resolves to keep her priorities straight. Twenty hours remain until Alla's rendezvous in the morning. Meanwhile, back in Berlin, Frankie proposes that Bond become his dog after encountering a woman with her puppy at the park. Returning to Princess Lore, Lloyd reflects on his failure to understand Anna the previous night, accepting that he's not the perfect spy he thought he was. As the second day of the trip begins, he tells the men to take the day off to enjoy themselves. Lloyd and Anna walk around the ship together, with Lloyd observing, analyzing, and adapting to Anna's actions. Anna, on the other hand, imagines shocking Lloyd with the news of your fighting people if she tells him her plan. She tries to distract Lloyd with activities but gets absorbed in them herself, spending the rest of the day trying to get the ball in at the miniature golf area. As Lloyd observes Anna during dinner, he notices her grimacing despite having fun all day, and he worries that she might be upset with him. Anna, meanwhile, is dismayed over forgetting about Yor while enjoying herself. Lloyd expresses his concern to Anna, asking if she's okay, and suggests reaching out to Yor to meet up tomorrow. He also mentions the fireworks show after dinner, to which Anna eagerly agrees. Meanwhile, standing by a radio, Matthew receives a transmission and makes a call to Alla's room. Yor answers the phone and informs the group that they've received the ready signal for the rendezvous in four hours. They prepare and change into disguises. Unbeknownst to them, the informant intercepts the transmission and shares it with the assassin leader, who orders his team into position for an ambush. As Yor, Alla, Graham, and Zeb head out to meet Matthew, they unknowingly pass by the assassin leader, who detects their presence and grins ominously as he recognizes them. Anna and Lloyd, on their way to see the fireworks, enjoy the spectacle of the crowd. Anna, unable to locate Yor amidst the excitement, listens for her thoughts but is unsuccessful due to the noise. On the ship's bow, Yor spots two men guarding the passages and decides to take the group up to the deck. As they step out, the fireworks show begins, startling them. Above, a sniper prepares to shoot Allah, but Yor reacts swiftly, pulling her out of harm's way, although she gets grazed by the shot. In the midst of the chaos, the surprised sniper barely dodges Yor's weapon after she throws it at him. Another assassin with knives attacks, but Yor fends him off. Suddenly, a large number of assassins reveal themselves and surround the group, catching them off guard. Realizing they have no escape, Yor draws her weapons, preparing to fight. Meanwhile, the sniper prepares to take another shot, but is killed by Matthew, who uses his rifle to shoot down several assassins. Matthew blows the lock of a hatch cover, directing Allah's group to hide inside. However, Yor gets held back by other assassins as the others head into the hatch. An assassin aims his gun at Alla, but Zeb quickly shields her and Graham from the bullets, tumbling inside the hatch and shutting the cover. Inside, it's revealed that Zeb is wearing a bulletproof vest, though he complains about the pain. Yor kicks a crate over the hatch, securing it, and when an assassin tries to blow up the hatch, she kicks him off the ship. 
She then turns to face the remaining assassins with a wicked glare. The assassins begin to attack Yor, but she swiftly takes them down with little effort. Meanwhile, Lloyd and Anna watch the fireworks, unaware of the chaos unfolding elsewhere. Yor and Matthew continue to kill many assassins with varying gimmicks, with Yor tearing through them, while Matthew follows close behind, disposing of the bodies. As the fireworks show reaches its explosive finale, Yor is shocked by a man with an electric baton and punched by another with big fists. However, she swiftly turns the tables, catching the baton and throwing it into the man's mouth. She then dispatches the other man with an endless barrage of spear hand strikes, ending the threat posed by the assassins. After effortlessly taking down the remaining assassins, Yor casually complains about jamming her finger, leaving the assassins stunned. The assassin leader is astonished by her actions and calls her heartless. Yor, unfazed, suggests they walk away, but the leader refuses, claiming they have been paid already and can't escape the boat. He prolongs the conversation with Matthew, allowing a swordsman to ambush them. Yor and Matthew dodge the swordsman's attack, but Matthew is knocked unconscious when hit by the sword sheath. Yor faces the swordsman alone, her grip weakens during their clash, and her weapon falls to the lower deck. As they continue to fight, Yor remembers a conversation with Matthew about disappearing if seriously wounded, worrying about leaving Lloyd and Anna without a word. The swordsman slashes at Yor, cutting off some of her hair, causing her brief concern about returning to her family with a different appearance. Despite hesitation, Yor refuses to withdraw, determined to protect Allah and the others. The assassin leader tries to strike a deal, offering a share of the bounty, but Yor rejects, stating she's not like them. She reflects on her reasons for becoming an assassin, struggling to find an answer amidst the chaos. As the swordsman aims at her again, Yor dodges but stumbles, allowing him to hit her with his sheath and knock her against a wall. Dazed and disoriented, Yor's thoughts drift to her daily life with Lloyd and Anna, as well as memories of Yuri receiving a job offer. Yor acknowledges that Yuri has grown into a fine man and decides to end her assassin job here. However, when the assassin leader moves to finish Allah and the others, Yor intervenes by throwing an eerie at him, recalling Allah's desire for a quiet life and her own reason for becoming an assassin. To protect Yuri's carefree life, she reaffirms her commitment to cleaning the world of needless tragedy, especially now that she has her new family in the Forgers. Reinvigorated, Yor grips the swordsman's blade and shatters it, then charges at the shocked swordsman. Despite being slashed on the chest, Yor remains unfazed, telling herself that she doesn't need peace or concern for getting her hands dirty. She believes Lloyd will understand if she dies or has to leave the forgers, recalling his admiration for her dedication to her work. With a powerful kick, Yor manages to gain some momentum in her fight against the swordsman, declaring her determination not to give up. Meanwhile, Anna and Lloyd return inside the ship after enjoying the fireworks display. Lloyd expresses relief that Anna had a good time but apologizes for not being able to locate Yor. As they make their way back, they overhear undercover SSEC agents in distress, and Lloyd reads their lips, learning of a bomb threat in the ship's hull, which greatly concerns Anna. Determined to address the danger, Lloyd decides to take action but first ensures Anna's safety. Reading his thoughts, Anna suggests going to a nearby drop-in daycare, allowing Lloyd the opportunity to intervene. After safely leaving Anna, Lloyd gathers information and finds himself facing the bomb and a crew member attempting to defuse it under pressure from the SS agents. Posing as a bomb disposal expert, Lloyd offers his assistance. Upon closer examination, he recognizes the bomb as a model often favored by Western extremists, raising suspicions of a more elaborate plot. Meanwhile, Anna continues her search for Yor and discovers her stiletto on the floor, hearing Yor's thoughts from above. Despite her efforts to assist by throwing the stiletto onto the deck, it falls short of the ongoing battle. Nonetheless, Anna inadvertently disrupts the plans of two nearby assassins, who are knocked out by her stiletto. With a renewed chance, Gore retrieves her stiletto and prepares for a final confrontation with the swordsman. However, before she can deliver the decisive blow, Matthew intervenes, shooting the assassin leader. Yor and the swordsman engage in one last intense clash, both sustaining injuries, but ultimately, the swordsman falls, signaling the end of the grueling battle. Yor, unaware of Anna's presence, ponders how she managed to retrieve her weapon in the midst of the chaos, wondering if someone assisted her. Meanwhile, Lloyd successfully disarms the bomb, prompting celebration among the passengers, though Lloyd remains wary of the SS agents and begins to suspect the presence of more bombs on the ship. The informant bids farewell to the passengers in a sadistic manner while another time bomb takes away unnoticed on the roof deck. Back inside the ship, Yor reflects on her retrieval of her weapon, while Anne overhears and considers informing Lloyd about the informant's plot. However, she decides against it, not wanting to reveal her secret, and instead tells a crewman about a suspicious man she observed near the clock. The crewman decides to investigate. Outside the ship, the informant listens to his bums on a raft, 
only to be confronted by the assassin leader. They argue about the purpose of the bombs, with the informant revealing his intention to sink the ship and cause chaos. The leader admonishes him, but they quickly turn on each other. Meanwhile, Lloyd leads the operation to defuse the bombs, discovering one hidden inside a clock on the upper deck. Realizing there isn't enough time to disarm it, he decides to throw it into the sea. As the clock detonates above the assassins on the raft, Lloyd instructs the crewmen to calm the passengers over the intercom. As Anna is taken back to the daycare by the worker, she quietly credits herself for averting the bomb threat, though her explanation is misunderstood as a need for another trip to the bathroom. Lloyd, recognizing the gravity of the situation, orders a thorough search of the ship, with SSA agents remaining on high alert for the duration of the voyage. Meanwhile, trapped inside the storage area, the assassins face the menacing presence of circling sharks. Yor and Matthew prepare the inflatable boat for Alla and the others, ensuring they are ready for the rendezvous. Matthew provides Zeb with instructions, while Yor bids Alla farewell, expressing her well wishes despite her reluctance to embrace due to her soiled hands. However, Alla insists on thanking Yor with a hug, a gesture reciprocated warmly by Yor. Ella ensures that even Graham acknowledges Yor's role in securing his future, prompting Yor to embrace the child affectionately. After Ella and the others depart, Matthew and Yor await the signal from the retrieval ship. Matthew notices Yor's sentimental mood and reminds her of their roles as foot soldiers, urging her to stay focused. Despite this, he relays Lloyd and Anna's request for a meeting the following day, viewing it as a reward for their successful mission. Matthew advises Yor to comply, considering it an opportunity for her to reconnect with her family. He tosses her a handkerchief to tend to her injuries and instructs her to apply ice to her face to reduce swelling before meeting her family. As twilight descends, Lloyd returns to the daycare to collect the sleeping Anna. As he lifts her up, he reflects on the necessity of leaving his family once again despite resolving the crisis. Reminded of his mission, he finds solace in the fact that his family is an integral part of that mission, giving him the strength to continue forward.